Hello everybody, my name is Anthony Jones and this is going to be the third installment of Lighting Techniques. So let's go ahead and get started. So, I've showed you guys a few ways of how you can use layers and how you can use um, particular uh, modes within those layers to help you achieve certain effects. I've showed you how we can put some uh, layer effects, or I'm sorry, effects onto your brush, like color dodge on your brush and stuff like that. And now I'm just going to show you kind of the final kind of last hurrah to this lighting techniques. And unfortunately for you guys, the lighting techniques three video is more about just knowing um, how to think about light. And this this won't really be about tricks, more about just kind of what I have uh, come up with in terms of how I approach light whenever I um, paint. So let's just go ahead and just jump into it so you know what I'm talking about. So typically people will start with like either a white canvas or even like a, a darker canvas like this or something like that. Uh, I typically go either complete black and then pull from here. Let me just make sure you can see that it, my canvas is black. So this is always a really great way to start. And if I don't start from black, what I do is, if you go up here onto the gradient tool, there's three um, gradients that I use consecutively. I use these very often. Um, and there's another one here that's kind of weird. It's kind of like the star, which, you know, can have some use to it. And in fact, I'm going to try to use it right now. Um, but I typically go 30%, maybe 40%, and I just go straight black, and I just drop this in. But usually, I, I usually come in from the top and just basically darken my environment. But I darken it uh, from white, um, so that way I get this kind of cool, kind of, if you really look, you can see like there's like these kind of, Texture that's being made from the gradient tool. And it's weird how this happens with the gradient tool, but I, I noticed this and I, I acknowledge it. And then if you know how to use the gradient tool, you can really create like horizon lines. So the longer this line is, the more of a gradient there will be. Um, the shorter the line is, the more it'll just, it, there will still be a gradient, but it'll chop off like re as soon as you get to the point where you have established. And so I typically try to do something like that. Now, that's one way of going about it. Another way that I like to go about it is, like I've mentioned before, start from black. And I do the opposite effect, where I kind of throw in light. And this is where I really kind of just put 20% light. And you can see how this actually makes it feel like the environment is being lit now. There's actual light source coming in. And so when I do this, um, I can really feel the light. Now, this third gradient tool, which I don't think anyone ever uses, is really cool because you can get this kind of weird, um, it's it's weird because there's like a sharp edge and then it gradates around it. Anyway, so this uh, gradient tool does this really cool thing where, you, like you can see, it has a hard edge and then also falls off. So let's, let's walk, look at it um, without any of the other stuff that's going on. So if I do like this, you can see that straight line, and then pretty much none of the top part of that straight line is being affected. And the bottom part is kind of getting gradated. But what's cool is that it's, you know, if you go from right to left, you kind of create this straight line and gradation. And if you go um, the opposite, it goes up. And so what I like to do um, is like I just kind of like just go nuts with it and... You can see how I'm starting to create some sort of um, lighting situation just from using this and creating some sort of environmental background. I actually probably going to start off with this one. This one's much better or much more interesting. And what I'll do from here, then I'll go back to like on my original gradation tool. And just kind of pop in some lights here and there. And so once I have something like this, uh, I use, usually kind of mess with it so it's, it's still pretty dark. Because the next step, um, I think you've 
seen me paint this type of painting before, but the next step is usually um, I just cut out a silhouette. Now, there's a few ways you can do this, of course. You know, you can make a new layer and literally paint a silhouette. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the silhouette just with light. And this is probably uh, the most fun I have whenever I do these kinds of things, is I try to make it up as much as possible. Now, I found when I was doing these types of paintings that using just light, you can get a lot of form. But the, the problem is that most people don't understand is that you have to understand that you are creating some sort of form. You're creating something out of a three-dimensional... You're creating something that's three-dimensional, and you have to have that understanding to be able to pump out some sort of um, design. And so what I'll do is I'll start with, like, my... Um, uh, light, and I'll just kind of cut in and out, and I'll think about, like, okay, this probably the head of this type of monster creature thingy, and then I'll draw maybe, like, the shoulders that are also being hit with light. And you can see how we can already start seeing kind of where this creature begins and where it ends. And then I can do something like this, where maybe the arm is coming at us. All creepy like and I can figure that out a little bit later but I usually jump from brush to brush too just so I can get a, a, a range of textures to deal with uh, some of these brushes are uh, brushes from different artists I've created a lot of my own as well but um, I found that other artists have a really good sense of how to make good brushes, so I just take their brushes. Uh, and I'm sure most of you guys have done the same. And I essentially keep most of the ones I like and get rid of the ones that I don't like. But like I said, I make my own brushes as well. You only need really kind of like 10 brushes that I've, I've experienced. Like, I really only need like 10. But... You know, I make a lot of brushes because I do a lot of different things. And so what it does is it saves me time doing this, like going here and adjusting those brushes a certain way. I just make a brush for that particular thing. And the way that you can go about doing that is if you find yourself using a particular brush with a particular settings very often, you should definitely make a tool preset or brush for that. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to keep on, you know, messing around with that one brush. So what's cool about what's happening here is that I can throw in like more of this light to really hint that there's this this thing is really being hit by that light. And you know, obviously this is going to be a little bit easier to do because it's just some sort of like abomination. So I can kind of make up a lot of this. A lot of this could be fudged, but I mean at the same time I don't want it to be completely abstract. And so I'll show you how I handle that in a bit. This is my comb brush. As you can see, it looks like a comb, because it is a comb. So what I'm doing here is now adding, again, more light. But this light is more of like a bounce light. This is going to describe my form on a different angle. Um, and what I typically do with this is I almost approach this as if I'm painting in the silhouette now. Like I'm trying to figure out what his silhouette is. And then I can just go back and erase. Well, not erase, but like just paint out some of this stuff. And so what I'll do here now is do like a shadow pass. So it's just ambient, like cast shadows to pop out some of these forms of his face or its face. But this lighting technique video is really just about seeing how I think about this stuff and really talk about it, right? Because I think a lot of you are really curious to how I approach this type of stuff, and this is really it. And unfortunately, like I mentioned before, there's no true technique. It's just you got to know what you're doing. Um, but the more you practice this, the more you just practice painting forms of this nature, the better you'll get at it, though. That's That's the thing. And so I highly recommend, you know, you keep practicing and working on it. But if you find yourself, like, really um, 
stressing out because you can't really f see the forms. Then what you need to do is like, don't do this process. Just practice form painting. Like do still life, do some studies. Uh, because once you start understanding form um, and what forms you can paint and how you can paint them and how you can see them without necessarily doing line art or uh, some sort of block in, um, then you'll you'll be able to do this kind of lighting much easier because lighting is not necessarily hard. What's hard about lighting is that you don't know what you're lighting. So if you know what you're lighting, then it's not going to be a big deal. It's actually going to be much easier to handle. Um, but if you have no idea, then yeah, of course it's going to be tough. If you have no idea like how this form is going to be turning or how this form's facing the the light, then yeah, you're going to struggle. So I want to draw some more hints to maybe things that are being caught by this light. Grab some more awesome texture brushes that I've created. And if you're curious to where you can get uh, my particular brushes, um, you can just go on uh, schoolism and look for my one of my interviews about tool presets and then in that interview like in the dialogue box you should see there's like a link that you can click that will take you to um, a place where you can download the, the brushes and you could get some of these but the, the thing is is that I need to make a new one because I constantly evolve my tool presets so I need to make a new video a new uh, set um, and plus I I stole like some of the brushes from an uh, artist named Peleng. I'm sure most of you guys know him. He's really great. If you're not sure, this is how you spell it. Peleng. Yeah, just Google search him and type brushes at the end of it and you'll be able to find his his link. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to find the link for it too so you guys can just go to the YouTube description and just look for it there. But, you know, you get his brushes too. They're really good. And if you ever look at his paintings, you can see why, like, he's got this really great set of brushes. You can see how he got them. His paintings still look so good because his brushes are pretty pretty great. For example, this is one brush that he has. Um, I, th I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Um, it's a really good, like, texturally blending type brush. Like, you can blend and texture at the same time. It's really kind of amazing. Um, I've been like trying to make a brush like this for a while and then like I just downloaded his brushes and I was like, oh man, <laughs> I should have just downloaded his brushes from the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's a really great brush. And then he has also like a lot of different cool like brushes to just get really great effects of texture and blending. It's just, this is why his stuff looks like, very seamless. But um, anyways, that's really all I need to say and just kind of show you guys how I, I go about this. Um, and you, you guys are always curious whether these things really take me as long as I say they do. Um, and like you can see, we're about 10, 13 minutes in um, and how far I've gotten with this. And it just goes to show like the fastest way to paint is not through technique, not through like some secret um, process. It's just... If you know what you're painting, then you know what you're painting, and you just paint it. You know, and luckily for me, when I paint these kinds of things, uh, it's whatever I want. You know, I don't really have an art director or anyone kind of breathing down my neck, telling me what they want to see. I just do whatever feels good to me. And when you have that kind of um, motivation, then you can really—it's really hard to screw up. And so, and obviously, like I put a lot of time and training into this kind of stuff, so it's not like it's an accident that my, my stuff comes out decent. Like, I, I do a lot of st practices aside from just doing paintings that I'd like to do. So, you know, I'll, I'll give you guys kind of an analogy of a way of thinking about it is that, like, you know, NFL players don't just play games all the time to get better at football. They they practice. They do scrimmage. They do sprints. They, do, they weight train. They eat right. They... Um, do plays, they practice just like a quarterback will just practice throwing the ball for like an hour, maybe two hours, just over and over and over. 
And these kinds of things make them play the game better. So when it comes to game time, you know, when a certain circ circumstance comes up, they have, you know, a set of subconscious, like, you know, reflexes that just happen because they've kind of like instilled it in their brain to the point where it's just like it comes out naturally. And that's kind of how I approach art is the same way. I, I do a lot of studying more than I do actually like just kind of hard work. Like I just study a lot. And then when it's time to work, then I like just get the work done quick because um, I do a lot of that, those, those scrimmages, you know, but with like art. And so don't try to always paint a final painting, you know, try to just do just some really bad paintings and just try to learn something from it, you know, and keep on doing those bad paintings and really keep learning how to fix your mistakes by kind of trial and error. And then eventually you'll, you'll get so much better at it um, that you won't make those mistakes anymore because you've already done like a crap load of those mistakes. So anyway, so I'm going to do kind of one more pass on this on it, blur the crap out of everything. And then so that way we can make this thing that's coming at us a little bit more. Like there's more depth of field. And I'm just going to add some chromatic aberration just to make this look like more like a photo. Smart sharpen and then some noise. Yeah, and so not not too bad for about 15 minutes. So I uh, hope this helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, to ask. Uh, if not, you know, uh, good luck to you guys. This is probably going to be my last lighting techniques video. I'm going to move on to other stuff, talk about different things about painting. Um, so... Anyways, good luck and uh, have a lot of fun in your adventures.